Hello to you guys out there in YouTube land. Yes, it's me, DR, and this is the first part of the video series that I thought I'd put up. And I don't know, maybe the kind of the vitriol is gone, but the reason for making this video still exists. So, what's the first part about? Well, a bit about my background in terms of me growing up as a kid. As I said before, my background is very religious. Uh, my family is very much a evangelical Christian family and when 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 my family came to the UK what they found is there wasn't this evangelical um, there weren't that many evangelical churches to be honest uh, and that's the story that I've been told from from my family so they joined the Church of England now the Church of England, obviously, an offshoot of of Christianity, um, and people can relate its heritage back to to Henry VIII and wanting to remarry and annul marriages and thus breaking away from the Roman Catholic Church. Obviously, there's channels that cover this in more detail than me, but it, it kind of that that understanding of of the fact that they just kind of found the closest denomination. To what they kind of thought was close to what they'd done before was one of the reasons, one of the compound reasons that kind of made me doubt the whole religion thing and, and, and actually kind of lead me away from religion. So, yeah, my background very much Church of England. So, as a kid, I was, I would say, forced, I was indoctrinated in the, in, in the church. So it's very much the very much conversations that I remember having were the type that asserted that something was out there. Very much the something's out there. There must be. You believe that something's out there, and I mean this almost led to my one of my beliefs that Santa Claus was like a gateway drug into religion. Now lots of people disagree with that. I'm I'm on the fence. I think believing in the phantom wizardry of this thing that knew you were bad and good was for me personally a gateway to the there's something bigger that believes that knows that you've been bad and good and knows things about you so uh, my childhood was very much about the church and strangely enough like most people's it was the going to church every Sunday. That's something my mum wanted me to do, so I did. I then joined the choir. As I was part of, as a choir boy, I would almost had a responsibility to understand the church even more and read the Bible. I went to confirmation classes. And actually, if I think back, and part two will cover kind of my deconstruction, the thing that helped me deconstruct the religion, especially the Church of England, was confirmation classes. Because if you're not aware of confirmation classes, and it's been a while, so I'm just kind of reflecting on what I can remember. My confirmation classes involved Bible studies, involved looking at texts and understanding texts, and going back to sessions and talking about the text and understanding it with our local vicar. Now, one of the things that kind of balances me out with the religion thing is my vocal vicar was a really really nice guy he wasn't you know he was really sensitive he listened to you obviously he had a presupposition to guide you towards the bible but he was a really nice person you know, it wasn't one of those horror story vicars it was really really nice someone that you could talk to someone you could trust and so in that respect that was really positive. I mean, my experience in the choir wasn't positive. My experience in the choir was very much a is a is a black kid in a primarily white choir. What's going on here? What's this person like? And I almost became the gateway to allow other uh, black families into the choir. So I was almost like a trailblazer. So the expectations for me as a black person in a primarily white church was almost to be more evangelical, more fervent than everyone else. 
and that, that was quite weird. Everyone else was allowed to, you know, sin. I say allowed to, but there was almost the, you know, you could sin throughout the week and then come into church and have your sins absolved. Whereas for me, that really wasn't the case. There was situations where I'd made honest mistakes, but actually those were carried on and compounded and, and, and made part of my identity, quote unquote. Whereas with other members of the church, it didn't happen in the same way. And strangely enough, that still happens to my mum in in a dirt church environment. It's still, the expectation is that she will be more evangelical. And I, I can't draw this to race, but I'm kind of trying to look at defining factors and there's not many. So in my opinion, and it's solely opinion, I think it is a race thing. There was an expectation that the non-white members of the church community were more fervent. You know, we were expected to lead on charity events. We were expected to be part of it. And if we weren't part of it, it was almost a, you know, you're not as godly as us. Now, you might say maybe my perception is slightly skewed, but that's how it felt. So I was part of all the church functions. So any church function that happened, we would go to it. We'd be so inundated with the church that actually it was we were so inundated with the church that actually it became quite suffocating and difficult to be around and that was my experience of the church and that's kind of what slowly led me out I I was always quite a questioning child I would always question things I always want to understand the why the wherefores and in 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 my life my mum had really nurtured that part of me the part of the question the one to understand wanted to know more you know, she bought me Encyclopedia Britannica's when I was a kid that's something I had and I was really driven to seek the answers whereas in religion I think thought that I was almost told to just believe and because she perpetuated, my mum had perpetuated this this drive to find out answers in the world, in the in in other areas and facets of, of my life. When it came to religion, I was almost I, I I had I applied the same rules. I think that was the danger in trying. In I think what she did very well was teach me how to think, and the fact that there were answers out there for these things that were seemingly magical so then when I turned that eye around on to my religious beliefs they slowly lost their shell and I think there's lots of people out there that what they will do is apply reason in small areas because they've been so indoctrinated so and this goes for most religions that I know of most well known, they've been so indoctrinated in that area, they almost have a blind spot and can't or don't want to apply the same the same reason, the same decision making process to other areas. And it, I've seen it happen numerous times where you say to someone, why do you believe X? And they say, well, why not? Of course it is. So for example, in the UK, there was, and if you read the Daily Mail, there was a woman that was lauded by the Daily Mail for having a go at a group of people who were protesting Brexit. And the gamut of the, of the, the, the crux of the story was based on a video where this woman was shouting, saying that, you know, Germany was creating rules for Britain and so on and so forth. Now, anyone of any sort knows that the whole Brexit issue isn't, can't be, quantified as a, in shorthand like Germany makes the rules it's, just, it's more complicated than that but she just applied this reason all the time she just applied this this narrative and wasn't able to listen to any other narrative there was just a cognitive distance there that I don't want to listen to you I've made my choice and I've made my decision and that's it I think the same thing applies to religions People look at it from their perspective and are unwilling to look at any other perspective. And thus, they've said they're right, they've paid their dues, 
they've bought into the belief structure that therefore they're right and nothing can change. I think that's dangerous. And I think that's where I mean, my what my mum did in teaching me that there are answers to questions and it's actually, and I, maybe I'm stealing this from the atheist experience, but it was okay for me to say at some point, I don't know, and that was okay because I could find out. I think doing that really helped me start the journey of looking at my religious beliefs. Now I'm going to cover other videos where I cover that journey, but I, th I think that again gives you a bit of an overview, a bit of background in terms of where I was in the beginning. And maybe watching this video you'll find some echoes and where you guys were. I'm just keen that I put this in video form, I record this, just even for my own selfish reasons. Anyway, this is DR saying peace out. Have a safe journey wherever you're heading. Bye.